Support Name Explain on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. In some way, shape or form, we all have a family, whether that be one you were born into or one that took you under their wing. And with families come a whole plethora of language we use with them and to describe them. There are specific words we use for these people in our life like mother and father, brother and sister, husband and wife, aunt and uncle, just to name some of them. Undoubtedly, these are words we use on an incredibly regular basis, though as well as these very popular words, there are some far less known of words that you can use to describe your family members too. That leads me to the question of where exactly did these words come from? How exactly did our family members get their names? Well, their titles I ought to say. This video isn't going to explain how exactly your mum specifically got her name I'm afraid. Let's start with mothers however, they're pretty vital for all of us considering they gave birth to us. What you will notice about a lot of these words is that because they are such ancient concepts, it means their etymologies are quite ancient too. Mother and variations of it are found in all kinds of languages. It's thought this word ultimately comes back to baby talk. One of the first things we do with language as babies is babble. Babbling is when we repeatedly say a consonant followed by a vowel. A common one is ma 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 ma. It's from this that we got the word mother. Ancient humans presumed that babies were thrown to them when they made this sound and were and just incoherently babbling. It's something we've actually held on to to this day. Further comes from similar roots too, but with the babbling of a pa 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 sounds instead of ma 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 sounds. This is why so many languages have words beginning with p for father. In example, the Latin pater, which over time in languages like Old Norse and Old German got shifted to start with an f and became father like we know it today. As to how mother became mum and how father became dad, we have entire videos dedicated to those, so go check them out. Collect your mother and father are called your parents. This word comes from the Latin parentum, which was created as a noun form of the present participle of the Latin pia, meaning to bring forth, slash birth, slash produce, which makes a lot of sense as that's what your parents did to create you. Sometimes mothers and fathers partake in this archaic ritual in which through stuffy old traditions their families become connected. We call this marriage. As well as people traditionally taking on new names when they get married, those who get married get new names for one another too. Married men are called husbands and married women are called wives. Husband is a word that's had an interesting history. It has origins in the Old Norse with the word husbondi, meaning householder. In the past, a husband was the male head of a house regardless of their marital status. Though as most head men tended to be married, the word husband started to morph to specifically mean a married man. As heads of the house, it meant husbands did a lot of work around the building, with upkeeping things. It's from this traditional upkeeping of a house as to where we got the term husbandry from, meaning to manage something. These days is more closely linked with the upkeep of farm animals and crops. Women who are married are called wives. Wife is an interesting word too it would seem. In the past, man was a term for all humans, hence how we have terms like mankind. When female humans got their own name of woman, it was initially Whiffman. This came from the Dutch whiff, which at its best was a slang term for women and at its worst was a derogatory word for them. This Dutch whiff not only created the term woman but the term of wife too it would seem. Yeah, wife pretty much comes from an old derogatory term for women, which isn't too great, especially when compared to husband which means things like head and carer. The gender neutral collected term for husbands and wives is spouse. Spouse comes from old root meaning things like to bind oneself or to make an offering. Funnily enough, this is the same root we got the word sponsor from too, hence why these words sound similar. And speaking of sponsors, that would be a terrific segue into the sponsor of today's video, but no one wants the sponsor name explained anymore. Maybe go check out the patron or something. Moving down the ranks from parents, we have the smaller humans that they create. Parents call their male babies sons and their female babies daughters. Collectively, they're known as children. As these are both pretty ancient concepts, their names are pretty ancient too. Both terms arrived in English from Germanic, Sanskrit, Proto in the European roots, it would seem. Children slash child too comes from these ancient origins. Offspring is a much more interesting interesting term for someone's children. It literally means to spring off of someone else. It may also tie to the idea of children being of spring, as spring is traditionally the season linked with new life and birth. One last sun-based fact I found out and won't really be able to share anywhere else is with the term son of a gun. This term supposedly comes from soldiers having children out of wedlock. These babies would literally be a son of a gun. This has all the trappings of a folk etymology however, but there's nothing saying it isn't true. If 
for you or one of your parents multiple offsprings and that means you have siblings. This term comes from the old English sib being a general term for relatives. The ling part seems to just be something of a diminutive suffix of sorts, just to make this concept sound a tad more cute I guess. Interestingly enough, this old English sib went into the creation of the term gossip too. Gossip was originally godsib, meaning godparent. As you would talk candidly with godparents and relatives, the term applied to all candid conversations and evolved into gossip. While sibling is an interesting word, it's not that likely you would ever refer to your siblings as just your siblings. We usually use the gender specific terms of brother and sister for male and female siblings respectively. Both brother and sister too both come from ancient roots. Brother dates back to the Proto-Indo-European Balata and sister dates back to Sweso in the same language. Often these terms are shortened to bro and sis and while these nicknames might sound pretty modern that isn't actually the case. We have evidence of sis and bro dating back to the 17th century being used in letters written at the time. What's interesting about these terms is how they have evolved outside of their biological usage. People are referred to as brothers and sisters in other walks of life, most noticeably in religion where fellow monks call each other brother and likewise nuns are known as sisters too. It's not only you who has siblings however, as there's a chance your parents do too. You don't call these guys your siblings however, instead they are known as uncles if they are men or aunt if they are women. Uncle is a curious word, it comes from the Latin avunculus which specifically meant your mother's brother. A father's brother was called patulus but it seems that term fell out of fashion. Avunculus literally means little grandfather, as I suppose yes your uncle is quite literally a smaller version of your grandfather. Aunt doesn't seem to have too much variation it would seem. Aunt like mother and father is thought to come from baby talk as well, supposedly the baby Amma. Aunt has got extended use however and has been applied to all women of a certain age in general. Oddly enough, Swedish has retained words for aunts depending on which side of the family they are from. A fasta is your father's sister and a mosta is your mother's sister. What I find most interesting though is that there isn't a catch-all term for aunts and uncles, at least not a popular one. Some have been suggested it would seem though. The one that's caught the most traction is pibbling. Pibbling is a very clever idea for a collective name for aunts and uncles as it's a combination of parent and sibling. This is because that's exactly what they are to you. You're your parent sibling. Along the same lines we have parsib too and uncle has also been suggested which is a combination of aunt and uncle. These are all valid ideas, let me know which one you like most down below, I'm personally a fan of piblings. If your piblings have children however, then they have a whole series of names applied to them. You can call these children your cousins. Cousin comes from Latin roots too and their word consubrius, which specifically meant a mother's sister's son. This is why the latter part of the word is similar to sister. Cousin faces the opposite issue of aunts and uncles however, in the fact that there isn't gender specific words for them, at least a popular one anyway. I have read that in the past, cousin was just used for men and its Latin roots seem to support this idea. This then gave us the term cousiness which was specifically for female cousins. This term of course hasn't picked up too much in popularity but appears in dictionaries. Maybe we could bring it back. While you may call them cousins, your parents wouldn't use that term. And likewise if your siblings had children you wouldn't call them cousins either. This is because to you the children of your siblings are called nieces and nephews. These two names both come from the Latin root of nepos which weirdly enough originally meant grandson before becoming the two Two terms we have today. It's from here we got the term of nepotism too, which means favouring a family member. Like with aunts and uncles, there isn't a popular gender neutral term for these guys. However, nibblings is picking up traction, as it's an adorable combination of sibling with the N seen at the start of niece and nephew. And on top of all these terms, there are many prefixes and suffixes that get applied to family members too, like grand for grandparents, being your parents' parents. You can also have grand aunts and uncles too. If you go back further, then great is applied to names too. God relatives are connected via religion. Half relatives are when you have one parent in common. Step relatives are when people become your family solely through marriage. In-law is the title your partner's family gets when you get married. And I have no idea what X remove means, and I don't think many people do. Though all of these terms can get applied to the aforementioned terms to make your family even more extensive.
Though, what if you wanted just one name that could be applied to every single member of your family, regardless of their relationship to you? Well, we have that as well. That being the simple word of kin. You can call any family member your kin, whether they be your aunt, brother or grandparent. This is an ancient word which comes from murky origins unsurprisingly, though it's thought to ultimately come from the Proto-Indo-European jin, meaning give birth. This root word has funnily enough birthed many other words too, most noticeably genes, which is the thing that traditionally ties most families together. Of course, though while that's the tradition, families come in all shapes and sizes now, regardless of their genes. This breaking of tradition means that traditional titles often get thrown out the window too, with families creating their own language they use for one another. I'd love to hear what names of your creation you guys use for your family members too, from your pop pops to your memars. Let me know down below. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patron is vital to Name Explain, and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Thank you all so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. You can find me on Twitter, I'm at Name Explain YT. On Instagram, I'm also Name Explain YT. And on Facebook, just search Name Explain. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And once again, thank you all so much.